Good morning, YouTube. Um, today I want to talk about uh, how to start a backyard chicken flock. Um, last year taught us in the world a lot about how people react to extreme situations. And last year when the pandemic started, um, we couldn't keep a chicken. Uh, if I had had a thousand egg layers to sell, I could have sold them in this area beyond a shadow of a doubt. What the problem was, was that there were a lot of people that did not know how to keep chickens, uh, did not know how to feed them, didn't know what to expect from them, how long does it take to lay eggs, so forth and so on. So today we're going to go over a lot of that stuff. Um, I'm going to show you a, di a lot of different, um, you know, feeders and, and things like that. And we'll talk about, um, some of the most commonly asked questions that Jamie and I get uh, after keeping chickens for about 15 years. So hang tight with me. I got a couple of chores to do and then I'll get started. All right, guys, I'm out here in my, uh, in our chicken yard. Um, so when you're getting started with a backyard flock of chickens, there's a couple of things you need to ask yourself. Number one is, why are you doing this? What do you want to get out of the chickens? Do you feel like you're just going to enjoy watching them peck the ground? A lot of people do. Some people think it's therapeutic. Um, a lot of people are thinking, man, if it gets crazy, at least I got something to eat. You're right. A lot of people do this simply for eggs um, and, and, you know, nutritional values and nutritional purposes and things like that. Um, but that's one of the biggest decisions that you need to make first is why you're doing this and to what scale you're going to do it on. Because those are going to be some of the questions that will answer a whole array of other questions that are going to come as soon as you make those decisions. So after you've decided what your intentions are with chickens and, and the direction that you want to go with in them, um, at that time it's a, it's a good opportunity to get educated on what kind of chickens are out there, what their usage are, and um, you know you can start deciding what it is that you want. Uh, if you want a chicken that looks a certain way, um, you know a, a lot of chickens they're, they're dual purpose birds. So they have a nice hearty body structure for meat and they also are a good egg layer so most of your heritage breed birds anywhere from probably 120 to 180 eggs a year you can expect to get an egg a day from your chickens okay um, that's a misconception that a lot of people have about chickens is that if you have a chicken he's gonna lay an egg every day that's not the case. It's time to get educated on what you want and what to expect from the birds that you have. Now that you've decided on what kind of birds that you want to buy, you need to try to figure out at what stage of life you want to buy those birds. Um, a lot of people don't want to go through the hassle of raising chickens from chicks or biddies uh, all the way up to an egg layer age or a meat age. So you have different options of places that you can buy chickens at different stages of life. So if you want to go all in and you want to get the full experience of chickens, there's some things that you need to know. And this is some of the stuff that you'll learn in your education process. Different breeds of chickens will take either less time or more time until they lay eggs okay uh, typically it's anywhere from 18 to 21 weeks and most birds will be laying on the latter end you're starting to look at some of your production uh, chickens that have been crossbred into that role in life to lay chickens or I'm sorry lay eggs um, you know 200 to, to 300 eggs per year uh, and, and some of that is even not guaranteed in the winter time if you have not learned how to keep your chickens in the winter time so picking a stage of life is a big deal you can find chicks all over the place okay there's hatcheries on the internet and believe it or not 
they will mail you chickens. Um, we do it with our meat birds every year. Uh, Jamie has done it with some specific breed birds a couple of times, and it's great. You order them, and then as soon as the post office receives them, you get a phone call, and guess what? You need to go get them right then and there. Um, the other ways are you can go to local feed stores, uh, Tractor Supply. Tractor Supply has always got chicks in the spring. They had them a lot longer this year uh, because of the pandemic. Um, local farmers, uh, flea markets, you know, even sometimes farmers markets that allow live animals. Uh, there's a lot of different places. Craigslist, uh, Wanted, a a all kinds of places. You can find chickens all over the place. You just have to look for them. Um, you can even go to a livestock auction, but if you're new to this, I do not recommend you going to an auction because you can get the wool pulled over your eyes really, really fast if you go to an auction. So know what stage of life you want to get into the birds at, okay? It's early morning and I had to change my angle here. The sun's getting me. Um, so the next thing that you need to think about is what do you need to be able to keep chickens even in your backyard? Um, number one, if you're sitting there thinking, golly, I live in the city and I can't have chickens. Sure you can. Check your local ordinance. A lot of times you can have hens, but you just can't have a rooster. You can have up to five, maybe even sometimes 20 depending on your uh, local city or county ordinance. Check those out and see if you can have them. Um, I suggest that you have some type of chicken coop, shelter, um, maybe even to begin with something that they're confined in. Um, I see a lot of people uh, advertising these that they build them and sell them on Craigslist. I see a lot of people that buy them um, off the internet and they come as a kit and they put them together they got this little fenced in yard with a nice little uh coop with a, a nesting box that you can get to it on the outside these things are important because they come into play with how the chickens feel and if they feel safe or not okay um that's a big deal with chickens chickens that are comfortable and feel safe and are happy lay a lot of eggs that's one thing that we struggled with early on. Um, the situations that we kept chickens in were not, uh, were not suitable. 15 years ago when we got into chickens, we didn't know a whole lot and we learned it all on our own. Uh, we didn't really search out videos and things like this to, to tell us how to do it. We just kind of figured it out over the years. Um, so a small coop, keep that coop clean. Uh, that's a big deal for chickens. If they're in a nasty, messy environment, especially if that coop's in a low lying area and it gets muddy and nasty, they're not going to like it and their, their egg production is going to slow down once they get to that point. Since we're talking about chickens and their egg production, let's talk about that in depth, okay? Um, there's a lot of misconceptions about chickens and how they lay and, and what happened to them in certain times of the year that they slow down laying. Uh, we have found over the years that you can help to increase a chicken's egg production uh, through a couple of different ways. Um, most of the time in, in the winter time, the fall and into the winter, um, their egg production falls off. There's a lot of reasons for that. One of the biggest ones is diet. The other one is how much light in a day there is. So the days get shorter when fall starts coming around and into winter. And for whatever reason, there's a sensory in chickens that they don't feel as comfortable if they don't have light longer throughout the day. So a lot of people will add a light with a timer in their chicken coops. This will help a little bit with their egg production. One of the biggest things that you need to understand about eggs is that eggs are a monster source of protein. It takes a monster amount of protein to create that egg. And when I say that, in the wintertime, think about the things that happen around where chickens live. There's not as much green grass to, to scratch and eat at. There's not as many bugs and, and things like that to eat on the ground. Uh, when they're out there scratching, they're not scratching up worms and, and things as often because it's cold. And all of those things are, are kind of dormant at that time. So they're lacking a monster source of protein. 
you have to increase that in the diet that you feed them. And there's a lot of different ways to do that, and I'm gonna tell you how to do that, okay? So when it comes to your chicken's diet, like I'm talking about, you've got to add protein in the winter, okay? This group that I'm standing with right now um, is a, a basically a free range group. They have a really large coop here. Uh, we have electric netting on them that we've just added recently. Before that, we let them free range out of this coop and out of the, the small chicken yard that they had about, about three times a week. Um, and what that allowed them to do was to eat grass and eat bugs and things like that and keep that protein up. So now that we've gotten into, uh, you know, the, the colder or the furthest end of winter now, with it being late January, we've had to do a couple of different things. Um, so we've had to up the protein amount in their feed. We already uh, use a layers pellet, okay? Most of those layers pellets are about 16% protein. You've got to get that protein intake up to around 20% to maintain your egg production through the winter. Um, <laughs> maybe, maybe doing this out here with them was a bad idea. Um, so anyhow, the way that we do that is we add some things to the layers pellets to increase the amount of protein that they get. Um, so we add uh, cracked corn, we add black sunflower seeds, and we add oats, okay? Um, this is a mixture, we'll buy the different bags and we mix it in with our pellet uh, in, in different um, uh trash cans big big plastic trash cans and we feed that to them now we'll say this free range chickens do not eat as much feed as what a confined chicken will eat okay um, so those are some things to keep in mind when you're looking at long-term egg production when you get into the winter months and they start slacking off you got to jack that protein up and you got to get them some extra light so continuing on with some of the things that you'll need to get started. If you decide to start with chicks, you're going to need some type of brooder with a heat lamp. Um, until a, a chick, bitty, is fully feathered, they need to be under a heat lamp, okay? Um, so that's number one. You need to keep their bedding changed out, whether it's um, they actually sell a chicken bedding. Uh, most of the time we'll use a, a pine shaving. That's a, a, we like to use a big flake because a lot of the times the chickens like to eat it. And I'm not so sure that pine shavings are great for chickens to eat. So uh, we'll use a big flake. But you're gonna need a way to... Get my buddy up here while we're at my feet cackling. Um, so, but you're gonna need a way to uh, feed and water chicks at their scale, okay? So they're small, so you need small feeders and waters. So this right here is nice and simple. This bottom is plastic and this, uh oh, she's ready to go. The, the bottom screws on to the mason jar, okay? This is a small mouth mason jar. If you're familiar with them, they come large and small mouth. This is a small mouth, okay? This is a waterer. You fill it up, fill it up like so, screw that on and flip it over. Same concept for a feeder, okay? This feeder, if you see it has holes in it, you're gonna take it, you're gonna fill this up with feed. And a lot of times down in my feed thing, I'll scoop this up to get it good and full. And then I'll do this number and we put it right in there with them. Um, depending on the amount of chicks that you have in a brooder, depends on how long this will last them, okay? It's a good idea as well to set these on something. Get them up off of the bedding that they're in because chickens scratch, even as chicks, and they're gonna fill this up with those pine shavings and it's gonna be harder for them to get to it. As your chicks get a little bit older, um, or even if you bought chickens a little bit further along in life, you're gonna need to scale up a little bit because you're gonna need to be able to put down more feed at a time. You're gonna have to have more water out at a time. So the next level that we use is an actual trough, okay? So this lid just opens up. This is probably uh, a whole scoop 
from a uh, feed scoop that you can buy at the feed store. You fill this up, close it down nice and tight, and they've got all these holes that they can pick in, okay? That would be feed. Still recommend to get this up off the ground or up off the bedding. Set a brick under this end, brick under this end, however you want to do that. This would be your next size up for water, okay? This is a gallon and same concept. You fill it up upside down, you put this on it, you screw it down tight, flip it over. Most of these things that I'm showing you, you can find at local feed stores. Now, whether or not they look like this and they're this brand um, is a different story, but Tractor Supply um, has a lot of this kind of stuff. Um, check with your local feed stores first, okay? Uh, try to support your local people, but, but you can find these online in a lot of different places. There's a lot of different poultry supply uh, companies online that, that supply a lot of this stuff. Um, this theme continues. Uh, so we have a lot of different sizes. So this is, is another size. This one um, is a feeder, okay? So it has slots in it and this one can hang. So once the birds get to a certain point, you really don't want them to be able to roost on anything because when they start to roost on things, that's when they start uh, leaving newer droppings everywhere. And if you set this on the ground, that's what they're gonna do. They're gonna sit on the top of it and they're gonna poop all over it and it's terrible. Um, this is one, this is a, a one that's very similar. This one has little stand legs on it that you can put it off the ground. It also has holes so that you can hang it as well. We use these, we use these, and there's some other ones that I'm gonna walk you over to a coop and show you, okay? So this is one of our mobile coops. And when I say mobile, I can put wheels on it. So all of them have kind of axles and I can slide those wheels on them and I can move them around. But this is a group of chickens that we're growing to add to our egg laying flock. And my door's kind of jacked up. And I want to come in here and I want to show you the, the feeders and the waterers and how we use them. Okay. So that feeder right there is one more, um, that we use when we're scaling up. Uh, of course, these were smaller birds, so we got a heat lamp in here with them. They have a waterer over there. Normally there's two of them in here. I don't know where the other one is. Um, oh, never mind. it's at my feet, it's hanging. So this one is a different type of water. It's about a gallon. Actually, I think that's a little bit more than a gallon, uh, but it hangs. So when the birds try to get on it, it does that number right there and they can't really roost on it. So this is a really, really good way to keep your chickens. As you can see, these guys love these feeders and these that are galvanized, they're very sturdy. They last a long time and we love them. So recap real quick on the things that you need to start your backyard chicken flock. Uh, number one, know what kind of chickens you want and, and what you want to get from them okay uh, number two get educated number three get the things that you need to be able to have that chicken flock in your yard a coop the proper feeders and the proper waterers know what kind of feed and where you can get it from um, if you don't have any feed stores close by uh, you can order it Lo and behold, sometimes a Walmart may even have chicken feed. You, you would be amazed sometimes what Walmart carries. Um, but if you have those things, you will enjoy keeping chickens. Now, I wanna close this out with a couple of commonly asked chicken questions, uh, just so that you can go ahead and have these questions answered. Some of them are a little bit funny if you know anything about chickens, but some of them aren't to somebody that doesn't know a thing, okay? and get my, my uh, cheat sheet here. So I've been asked this, I don't know how many times over 15 years of people talking to me about the chickens that we have. Do you have to have a rooster to get eggs? The answer to that is no, absolutely not. Um, think of it this way. A, 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 a woman, a female, she ovulates eggs every month. So she's the keeper of the eggs so guess what 
The chickens, the hens, they are the keeper of the eggs. They lay eggs whether there's a rooster here or not, okay? Um, the second, I get asked this question sometimes two, three times a month. Is it safe to eat a fertilized chicken egg? Now, when it comes to hens and roosters, um, when a rooster does his job for hens and fertilizes her, she will lay fertilized eggs for up to 30 days from being in contact with a uh, rooster. It is perfectly fine to eat an egg that is fertilized. Now, as long as those eggs are collected daily, there is absolutely nothing wrong with them. Um, if you let your chickens completely free graze and you come across some that uh, you just find a spot where they've been laying and they haven't been laying in your boxes, I might would be a little bit skeptical about those eggs. There's a couple things I would do. I would probably float test them. Um, and when you float test them, that's gonna tell you if the eggs are still good or not. Whoa, got a chicken. Um, anyhow, if, uh, it's all right, it's all right. So anyhow, you, I was attacked. All right, I'm back after that vicious chicken attack. Um, so the next question that I get asked sometimes from our customers that buy eggs from us, is it safe to eat an egg that has a blood spot in it, okay? So that blood spot, that blood spot is <laughs> the one and only duck that we have. Um, the blood spot is a blood, busted blood vessel. Lord have mercy. Uh, is a busted blood vessel. It's safe to eat it. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, you can pull it out of the raw egg if you'd like, if you just feel more comfortable that way, and you can move on from there, and there's nothing wrong with it. Eat it all day long. Um, what is a broody hen? Okay. A lot of people, um, after keeping chickens for so long, they'll run across a hen that stays in the nesting box. Sometimes that hen will be on eggs and sometimes it won't. Um, when they call her broody, that means that she's gotten to the point to where she's laid some eggs and her motherly instincts are kicking in and she's trying to sit on eggs to try to hatch them. That's what chickens naturally do. I know there's people all over the place that pull their eggs and put them in an incubator. We do that. Uh, we just feel like it's, it's a little bit more safe, a little bit more controlled that way. Um, but that's what a broody hen is. Sometimes she can be very protective. And when you go to try to pull her out of that box to see if she's sitting on eggs or if she's not or how many or whatever, um, she may peck at you and she may be pretty aggressive at it. I've even seen broody hens chase people out of the chicken coop. So that's what a broody hen is. That's what it's all about. Uh, you have to kind of watch it a little bit. Some of them won't peck at you, but some of them will. And it, and it can be, uh, if you get one that pecks you pretty hard on your hands or whatever, it can hurt. Um, the last question, we kind of hit on it a little bit earlier when we were talking about egg production, but why? do chickens slow down laying eggs in the wintertime? Um, they slow down because of the things we talked about earlier. Uh, there's less light during the day and they lose protein in their diet. Remember, in the wintertime, there's not as many bugs floating around. The grass is not as green and it's not as, as uh, filled with nutrients. There may be grass out there, but it's kind of dormant, it's kind of brown, it looks kind of crappy. They're gonna eat it anyway, but it just doesn't have as much nutrient in it. Um, there's a lot of other questions that we get asked about chickens. Uh, my wife is our area's resident crazy chicken lady, so she gets questions all the time like that. But, um, this is probably some starter information for you to get started with your own backyard flock. Now, you're going to have questions along the way. You can leave questions down in the comments and I'll be more than happy to answer them, uh, Jamie gets on and, and she checks comments every now and again for questions asked. But if you get started, don't be scared of it. Go after it. Be all in. And um, I think that you will enjoy it. I think that uh, you'll get a lot out of it. And you'll probably learn that before too long, you'll be trying to figure out 
how many chickens can I really have in this backyard? So um, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. And uh, if you have not liked and subscribed, please follow along. We do a lot of things here. Um, horses, uh, cows, <laughs> pigs, chickens. Um, and there's no telling what else we may get into in the, in the future. So thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video.